Hello, welcome to this video where we look at the connection between a tangent plane and the gradient vector. We've seen how the gradient vector is, is used for directional derivatives. We've seen that the direction of maximum increase, increase happens in the direction of the gradient. We've seen that the gradient is orthogonal to every level curve. And now we're going to see the connection between the tangent plane and the gradient. So what we have here is a surface. It actually is um, a level surface. So there's a four dimensional function and uh, we're going to have that function be equal to a constant. And this here gives us our, our shape S. Our surface is a level surface of this function. And so we're going to have a point who's on our surface. Okay, that point there, P, is called X naught, Y naught, Z naught. All right, it's on the surface. And then we have a curve, C, also on the surface. But at the same time that it's on the surface, it goes through the point P. All right. If this curve is on the surface, what we're going to do with it then is parametrize it. We're going to have some kind of functions that, that represent the X, Y, and Z as you travel along that curve, a space curve. It's, it's a, a vector function that parametrizes that curve. Now, any point that's on the curve is also on the surface. So we can take the, kind of like when we found out the uh, intersection between a line and a plane, we take the parameterization, the x, y, and z, we plug it into the, the function. Well, the same thing is going to happen here. We're going to take this function, whose capital F, plug in the x, y, and z, it's set equal to k. What are we going to do with this? Well, on the next slide, what we're going to see is that this particular function, we're going to take the derivative of it. All right, derivative to the left and a derivative to the right. Uh, here's a smaller version of the picture. If these guys are all differentiable, then the function is differentiable, and we'll go to take that. Now, to take the derivative, though, what we're looking at is composite functions, right? A function inside of a function. So what we do to take the derivative is definitely the chain rule. And so here we go. We take the partial with respect to x times dx dt, the partial with respect to y times dy dt, the partial with respect to z times dz dt, and then the derivative of the right-hand side, which was k, is just zero. Now, we're going to just cleverly rewrite this, okay? We're going to have uh, the, the parts with the partials all together, the parts with the derivatives all together, and think about it as a dot product. So what we're looking at then is the partials as each, each, each partial is a component, and then each derivative of, um, with respect to t is a, is a um, component of the other ver uh, vector, and the dot product between these two is equal to zero. It's saying the same thing as the statement above, but it's saying it in a way that we can really gather something from it, because we know what that left vector is. It is the gradient. What about that right vector, where you have dx dt, dy dt, dz dt? Now remember, um, r is your uh, parameterized function. It's your space curve. If you take the derivative of each component of r, what you'll have is the velocity. And so the gradient dotted with the velocity function, which is actually is going to be your tangent line, a tangent vector, um, the gradient dotted with that is equal to zero at that particular point, p. That means that these two vectors are orthogonal. Now, this uh, tangent vector, r prime of t, not, it lies in the tangent plane. Okay. So t naught is the parameter value that, that gives you x naught, y naught, z naught. Okay. So you travel along t, t1, t2. t2. So we're saying t naught is the one that gets you right at x naught, y naught, z naught. So R of T naught is your X naught, Y naught, Z naught. The tangent vector, R prime at T naught, it lies in the tangent plane. Well, if, if the gradient is orthogonal to that vector, and that vector lies in the tangent plane, then the gradient is orthogonal to the tangent plane. And that's called a normal vector. So the connection between the gradient and the tangent plane 
is that the gradient evaluated at that point is the normal vector. Now this is built for functions that are uh, implicitly defined. You have the x, y's, and z's all intermixed up like this example here. x squared y plus 4xz cubed minus yz. It's set equal to zero. You can't untangle that. You can't solve that for z. It's implicitly defined. If you have a function that is defined like this, we now know from, from the previous two slides that if we are to find this function's tangent plane, to find the, um, the normal vector to that plane, we just find the gradient. So you got your um, you got your ABC. Uh, back when we were learning, remember how we were learning planes? We said we have a, a normal vector and we have a point. Then we can put them in, and we could be able to um, find out what 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 the equation, the plane is. Okay. This is only true when you know when the when the tangent plane is is. Um, when the plane is tangent to the surface uh, at that particular point. And, and each of these A, B, and C, they are the gradient components. We have the I component of the gradient and the J component of the gradient and the K component of the gradient. And so this isn't the normal way that we write the equation of a plane, but it is going to be the equation of the tangent plane. When your function is defined, implicitly x y's and z's all mixed in together all right so let's go ahead and work, work on this question then we have x squared y and 4xz cubed and minus yz and that's set equal to zero if it isn't like if we have some terms that are on the other side then the first step to get to capital f is to is to move terms over either set it equal to a constant or set it equal to zero i prefer to set it equal to zero and move everything over to one side the point of interest is one two negative one Let's take the partials. What is the x partial? It's going to be 2xy plus 4z cubed. What is the y partial? It's going to be x squared plus 4z cubed. I'm sorry, the y partial. Uh, x squared minus z, e, sorry. Um, yeah, and then the z partial is going to be 12xz squared from the middle term and then minus y. Our job, not just take these guys, but evaluate them at our point of tangency. X is 1 and Y is 2 and Z is negative 1. Okay, so um, X times Y is a 2, times a 2, that's a 4. Uh, the animation is off a little bit, sorry about that. And then um, Z cubed is negative 4, so it ends up being 0 for that one. Um, over here, we'll have 1 plus 1, so that one's end up going to be 2. And then for this guy here, we'll have... Uh, 12 and then we'll take away the 2. So this normal vector to the tangent plane is 0 to 10. Okay, now what do we do with that? Well, we take that along with the point and we plug them in, we figure out the value of d and we have the equation of the plane. So um, uh, the point was uh, 1, 2, negative 1. And so we take the 1, 2, negative 1, the 0, 2, 12. We multiply 0 times 1 and 2 times 2 and 10 times negative 1 plus d is equal to 0. And we can backtrack then and figure out then um, the equation uh, of the point. That tells us that d, sorry, the animation is out of order. Gosh, it tells us that d is equal to 6. And so we, um, we then have 0x and 2y and 10z plus 6 equals 0. And if you get to the equation and you recognize that they have something in common, you could factor that out. So we have it y plus 5z plus 3 equals 0. Sorry about the animation being out of order there. All right, so if you have a function that's implicitly defined, you can now go and find the equation of the tangent plane. Just go find the partials of your function. Um, create a function where everything is set equal to 0. And the x, y's, and z's are all mixed in together, entangled together. And then we'll, um, we can then from there be able to find the equation of the tangent plane with no trouble. All right, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Comment down below, um, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.